Hello, beautiful. Hey, have you always wanted to know how to study the Bible in your bullet journal? Because that's what we're going to talk about today. I am Nikki Drake, founder of Crazy Simple Truth, and I give you crazy simple tips and inspiration to get into God's truth, God's word, so God's word can get into you and change your life. So today, I'm going to show you in my bullet journal how you can study the word of God super in-depth, just with a bullet journal. Some of you bullet journal in your, your whole life, right? Some of you like that's your planner, that's your, your prayer book, that's everything that you do. And so I want to show you how you can study in depth using it. So first off, you're going to want to gather your supplies. So of course, you're going to want your bullet journal and um, you are going to need some colored pens. Okay, so we are going to use these today. They're friction erasable. I will put these and the bullet journal that I'm using in the description box below. Um, but it's great to have a lot of colors for when you're verse mapping or unfolding truth. And then we're gonna make this super simple, crazy simple, because that's what I'm all about. And we're gonna use biblehub.com. It's my favorite Bible study tool because it's very simple, crazy simple, <laughs> and easy, okay? So let's get started. I think we will go ahead, let's see, what verse do we want to do? I was reading Philippians this morning, and it was so good. Let's look at Philippians. We are going to choose. Now, how do you choose a verse? That's such a great question. What book of the Bible are you reading right now? Find a verse that really stands out to you or speaks to you from that book, okay? So let's find one in Philippians that stands out, that sometimes it's just because Christ is mentioned or God is mentioned, right? And so that's why you would choose it. Um, sometimes you could choose a verse to study that is um, a repeated topic or the main theme, okay? So there are lots of different reasons why you would choose a verse to unfold or verse map in your Bible study journal. Or, 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 um, it could just be because it's a topic that you're studying right now. So, for instance, if you are grieving, you may look up scriptures for those who are grieving and you may choose to use your bullet journal and study those verses in depth in your bullet journal because of the topic of grieving. So, let's see which one. I'm still looking for one. Looking for one that's speaking to me. Okay, so verse 9 says, And this is my prayer, that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight. Mm, I don't know, maybe not that one, now that I read it out loud. They're all good, but I'm just trying to find just the right one, folks. Just the right one. Okay, so just so you know what I'm doing here, is I went to Philippians right here at the top. Okay, and I chose Philippians. And then you go here and you're going to choose, let's say, okay, so I'm going to go to 113. You want to choose the chapter in the middle pull down menu, okay? And then you want to make sure that Bible Hub Parallel is selected, okay? If you don't know how to use Bible Hub, I want to make sure those three pull down menus are going to be your most important step. If you don't have Bible Hub Parallel selected, then you're not going to have these easy tools, okay? All right, let's do this one. Verse 13 says, As a result, it has become clear throughout the whole palace guard and to everyone else that I am in chains for Christ, okay? So um, right over here it says context. This is going to give you the verse before and the verse after, oh dear, I'm going to run out of battery, so that you know what this verse is saying. It says, Paul's trials advance the gospel, okay? So it's important to know the context. What is happening in this one verse that I'm pulling out to study in my bullet journal? And you're just going to open it up to wherever it is that you like to whatever page you're on or whatever how, whatever system you got going on. I mean, you could start at the very beginning and you could study in depth the entire book. Um, you could study, like I said, by chapter and you would just write this out and I'm gonna write it right in the middle of the page. 
I was going to pause you while I write it out, but I think I'll just go ahead. As a result, comma, it has become clear throughout the whole palace guard. I need new washi tape so bad. Mine is so outdated. Um, throughout the whole palace guard, I thought of that because it's fun in a bullet journal to um, add some fun stuff to it. And to everyone... else that I now Paul is writing this letter while he's in prison just so you know I just happen to know that about Philippians like I said I was reading it this morning I just came out with my scripture um this thing the interleave journaling bible with Philippians I just got it actually from Amazon today so um, we will be doing some things with some of those books. I'm working on writing some Bible studies for you so you can go through those books either using this system or you can wait until they come out with the Bible studies. But you would, um, you could do your verse mapping or your unfolding truth right here in these books or because this is about bullet journaling, you can do it right here. Okay, so then I would do that. Now because you have these little bullet journals and if you are a bullet journaler, you are really good at using these dots to help you line up your writing so that it looks purdy. So I would do that. Next, I'm going to say, does any of this talk about Christ? So yes, yes, it does. So I'm going to choose to underline Christ. I am in chains for Christ. Now, this isn't about Christ. This is about Paul. So I'm not going to underline any of the other things about Christ because it isn't about Christ. It's saying that Paul is in chains for Christ, right? So that is that. And now I'm going to look and see if there are words that are interesting to me. It says, as a result, it has become clear throughout the whole palace guard and to everyone else that I am in chains for Christ. Well, there's one word that really stands out to me, and that is chains. So I'm going to box around chains, and that's the word we are going to look up. You could also look up clear. That word's kind of interesting to me, so that is one that I would look into also, but we're not going to take up too much time today. So what you do is the Berean Study Bible is right here. That's what my books are written in, Berean Study Bible. You don't have to use Berean Study Bible. You can use whatever you want. However, if you are using the Berean Study Bible, it's super easy to use Bible Hub. So I'm going to look for the word chains. And it is right here. And I'm going to click on this baby. And we are going to get a Greek definition. Desmon. Okay, it says right here. It is. It means a band, a bond, imprisonment. Um, let's see what else it means. Chains, impediment, band or bond. He is talking about literal chains, but to me, it's saying that he's talking about figurative chains too. So what could you do here? Let's just make it super, super simple. Let's just put the Strong's Concordance number 1199, and the word is D-E-S-M-O-S, -S, and it means a band or a bond. A band a bond. Okay, so this is what I would do in my bullet journal if I were unfolding or verse mapping this verse. I would then, you could do a square. I'm going to be creative here and I'm going to do some little bubbles. People who bullet journal are usually creative people and at least like to try to add some color or some little shapes around things. So that's what I'm going to do there. That's my definition of chains. I know that it's the definition of chains because I used the same color, okay? Now we're going to go out of that. So we're going to backspace. And we are going to go to um, compare translations, okay? So I'm going to compare translations in chains for Christ. I'm going to look at this word, chains, and see what the other Bible translations had to say. The reason why you do this is so that you can figure out better the original language. 
Philippians was written in Greek. So this word, desmos, desmos, is Greek, all right? This is what it looks like when you write it in English, but this is the Greek word. So this, by comparing other Bible translations and looking at the way that these scholars translated it differently, we may learn more about this word, desmos, right? All right, so the NIV says, I'm in chains for Christ. The NLT, I am in chains because of Christ. ESV says um, to all the rest, my imprisonment is for Christ. Now that's interesting to me. So I'm going to write ESV, my imprisonment. So he's there because of the gospel is for Christ. Christ. That's interesting to me because it's different and it's wording it a little bit differently. All right. The Brian Study Bible, we already know. Brian Literal Bible says, so as for my chains in Christ. Okay. So that's not helpful to me. Um, so that my bonds in Christ are manifest in all the palace. So King James Version is saying so that my bonds in Christ. So I'm going to write KJV bonds. In Christ, okay, and then I've got NASB says my imprisonment in the cause of Christ. I love that. NASB, see how you're learning better what this Greek word is that Paul's using. Okay, you're getting all these different wordings, and it's helping you understand the definition of this word, okay? So my imprisonment in the cause of Christ. My imprisonment in the cause of Christ, okay? Um, next, the Amplified says, my imprisonment is the cause of Christ. So that's saying the same thing. Um, the Christian Standard Bible is saying, because I am in Christ. So he's saying, or this one is saying that my imprisonment is because I am in Christ. So, eh, you know what? I'm perfectly good with these three. This, this was good for me. So I use this same color here. So I could go ahead and use a different color if I wanted, just so I'm adding more color. What I'm going to do, though, is in my bullet journal, I'm going to underline where this word for chains is. So imprisonment, bonds, imprisonment. Now, it's not just that word that we were looking at. We were looking at this whole phrase, I am in chains for Christ. My imprisonment is for Christ. Bonds in Christ. My imprisonment in the cause of Christ. But I just wanted to underline those because I'm going to use a whole different color here. So I'm going to use my bullet journal dots and it's going to help me Draw straight lines, and we're going to go out here because this one's way out in the way out, and we're going to do this, okay? So then you've got that. I guess I could make it go into this. You could, I could have ran it under it. I just thought it'd look cute if I connected it, so that's why I did that. Okay, the next step then is going to be looking for cross-reference verses. So on Bible Hub, when you have pulled down this Berean Study Bible, whoops, not the Berean Study Bible, hold on, hold that thought. Bible Hub Parallel, which is where you already are, you're going to find underneath the context, underneath the verse, you're going to find cross-references, okay? So these are other places in the Bible where a similar topic is used. They're not all going to be helpful. Acts 28.30, that's not helping me. It's right for me to feel this way about your sister's for in my chains and in my defense and confirmation of the gospel. Nope, mm, it's kind of helpful. Okay, 2 Timothy 2.9, all right? It says, for which I suffer to the extent of being chained like a criminal, but the word of God cannot be changed. I love that. Love it, love it, love it, love it. I get so excited. I get so excited. That one's so good. That's so good. Okay, sorry. 2 Timothy 2.9. So I'm going to write this right in my bullet journal. 2 Timothy 2, 9. And my iPad is going to die for which I suffer 
to the extent. Whoops. This is why I use an erasable pen. I will link these below. They are great for your bullet journal because if you mess up, you're not messing up the whole page, which I suffer to the extent. I know some of you are going to say, but Nikki, the words disappear in the heat. I know the extent, but how often do you have your bullet journal laying out in the sun of being chained? And I'm pretty sure if you put it in the freezer or the fridge, it pops right back up. Being chained like a criminal. Ooh, that is so good. Criminal. But the word, ooh, I love that. Okay, but I love that. The word, that's a big old but. Big old buts are important in Bible study. The word of God cannot be chained. Wow, I love that. Okay, look at exclamation mark. There's an exclamation mark. That means pow, this is what it's saying. This is what is going on. And since this talks about the word of God, I'm actually going to use this color that I used for Christ just for fun. And we are going to, let's see, what could we do here that's different? We're going to box around this. Oops, Nikki, Nikki, Nikki. I could erase that. These are erasable too, but I'm not going to focus on that. I'm going to go ahead and let's see. Let's do it this way. If you love creative note taking on my Patreon, which is so old, I don't post new videos there, but there are like 150 posts there with different videos and things. And one of them is like kind of a whole series about creative note taking. And I teach you how to do um, little boxes and things like that, like this in it. If you're interested, some people just join for a month or two and pay the fee to watch all the old videos and get all of the free content that's involved in paying the fee. So I guess it's not free content, but um, they do that so they can learn these things. So if you're interested in that, that's a great idea. The next thing we're going to look at is commentary. So you go all the way down here to the bottom on Bible Hub and it says Ellicott's Commentary for English Readers. You are going to look at these people. This is Ellicott. This is Pulpit. If you click on Parallel Commentaries, you're going to get all kinds of people. You're going to look through this. These are scholars. These are professionals on Bible Hub that have written down their opinion on this. You're going to go through and you're going to find one or two that help you make sense of this, okay? So Ellicott says, my captivity is understood as being part of my Christian life and work and so becomes a starting point for the preaching of the gospel. Okay, so that wasn't really like pow, pow. The apostle was a prisoner at Rome. No. His bonds in the cause of Christ. He was in prison because he preached Christ. Okay, so that's kind of interesting. So Barnes notes on the Bible. That is who wrote this. Barnes notes. Okay, so that is the commentator. And he wrote um, his bonds in the cause of Christ. He's in prison because he preached Christ. He's in prison. So it helps you understand that better because he preached Christ. So you could look up multiple words and define them. You could hear, like I did, define multiple different translations. You could look at multiple commentaries and write them in. You can see how you would have a lot more space around to do some different things. You do what works for you and make it fun. So now I can, let's see if I can make a, I'm awful at making circles, but I'm going to attempt to make a circle there. Woo, I kind of did not too bad, huh? All right, and because this is bothering me that this is connected, I'm going to erase it, and that's why I love erasable pins. There we go. All right. All right, so this is how you would study the Bible in depth in your bullet journal. And this was Philippians 1.13, so I'm going to write this down up here. We're going to make a little box. We're going to make a banner. I'll show you how to do this real quick, like. If you're an avid bullet journaler, you probably know how to do this. Philippians 1, 
13. That is our verse, okay? So you've got your little banner here, all right? So then you're going to, about ha halfway down, not about, halfway down, you're going to draw a line out like this. Whoops, I bumped the camera with my new glasses. And then you're going to go straight down like this, okay? I know it looks weird. And then you're going to do a line out that's parallel, meaning it runs the same direction as this line. And then you're just going to draw two little flaggy flags, flaggy flags there. And you're going to draw this upward. Now watch what happens when I fill this in. You've got your shadow and cha-ching, you've got a banner. Cool, right? Okay, so then I'm going to take one of these colors just for fun. And I'm going to box around the inside of this just to schnazzy it up a bit. Ooh, I'm shaky. Okay, so that is that. Now, if you were wanting it to look more like a verse map, you could do some fancy things um, with your different shapes here. Okay, so you could draw some lines off of it. So let's say here I wanted to just go like this. And here I could go, I could just connect this like that. This one, you could do a, let's do like a, since it's a swirly, let's do like a swirly. And then this one, we're going to go ahead and do a curved arrow. So you've got your arrows and your lines here to connect it all together. And then it's sort of like a map, or I call it unfolding truth because I didn't coin the term verse mapping so i had to come up with my own but here's the deal psalm 119 130 i didn't come up with unfolding or unfold the truth at all god did so it is his term for digging deep into his word and that is why i use it and so you are unfolding truth in your bullet journal and i know this one says bible study bullet journal it doesn't have study prompts it's literally just so you can make notes so there it is. Ta-da! So I would go in and maybe, you know, write some things or draw some things. Let's, for fun, let's draw some things. So if you love bullet journaling, okay, let's just go in and draw some things. So I'm going to type in flower doodles. That's all I'm going to do. Flower doodles, all right? Doodles are little sketchy drawings. And I'm just going to click on images. And I need some inspiration because I'm not very good at like just coming up with my own boom pow. And so I'm going to look at some of these for some inspiration. And now this one's really pretty. So I'm going to use that and I'm going to draw these. And I'm going to use my erasable pen because that's a good idea. They may not look just like this and that's okay, but I'll show you how to do it. So you're going to have your little circle. And you're going to have your flower petals. See, they're not perfect. And then you're gonna have your little stem. Whoop. Let's see what else is here. I'm, whoop. Oh my goodness, I really knocked you out that time. Let's see if we can click on this. I'm just using it as inspiration. So I'm not gonna draw all these flowers, but I'm just gonna take a few that are fairly easy to come up with. We're gonna do that. This one just has a one stemmer. And then we're gonna do, let's see, let's come up with one of these big ones. How do I wanna do this? I'm thinking, I'm thinking. Let's do this one. So I'm not drawing it exactly like theirs. I'm kind of doing my own style, which is great. Um, we're going to do that. That little guy is there. And then I need something else that's going this way. So let's do, I love this swirly one that's in here. Can you guys see that? Yeah. Let's do that one. It's easy. Anybody can do that. Let's do that. Okay. So look at that. Ta-da, 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 ta-da. Okay. Now we are going to... Well, I need to dot this in because it doesn't look like a flower, does it? Dot, 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 and we're going to go like this. So see how super simple that was? Super, super cute. 
and it's giving you um, some just some more variety to your bullet journal to make it fun and cute. And so you could then go in if you wanted to and color a few of these pieces. My tablet's gonna die. So we're gonna just do it like this, like really haphazardly, so I don't bleed on my marker. That's the cool thing about bullet journals though and about art is you can make it look however you want it to. I know we were talking about verse mapping, but if you're a Bible study or if you're a bullet journaler, you like art, so that's why you're still watching. I know that. So let's just go ahead and make it fun. That one. Let's see, what else did I have? This purpley, pinky color. We'll make that one. Okay, so we've got this little guy now. And I think what I'm gonna do, I don't know what color I'm gonna do that one yet because I think I wanna use this kind of bluish turquoisey color for my stems. So I'm trying to decide what color I wanna do this flower. I guess I'll just do it this color. There it is, ta-da! So I have verse mapped or unfolded truth in my bullet journal. I'm gonna do one more step. I'm just gonna do this on the outside of it, like that, just to give it something else. There you go, ta-da, there it is. Okay, I will see you in the next video. Hey, if you love all things Bible study, you are definitely gonna wanna subscribe to my channel and make sure you watch the video on the screen. You can click on my picture and it will help you to subscribe to my channel. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. And hey, if you click on the other picture that's not a video and not me, you're gonna to go to my website and you can sign up to study the word of God with me. There's also all kinds of free tools there that you can use to dig deeper into the word of God. So you are beautiful. God loves you. Don't forget, this is listed below. The markers, all of the goods and goods are listed below. And the website is biblehub.com. I will see you soon. Bye. Really what are you what are you doing? Um cleaning stuff. You're cleaning stuff? Is it pretend fish in there? Wow, I like your pretend fish in there.